This week, we're gonna share how you can use a home altar to create a sacred space and promote prayer in your family daily life. We love to collect things and display them. Trophy walls, coin collections, competition photos. Pretty much every family has an Uncle Joe with a dedicated area for his enormous train set. Sometimes, ironically, these come out at Christmas. Why do we even need a home altar? Or maybe your family already has one. Have you talked about the history of it, what the objects mean? Or is it just a collection of very beautiful decorative items that you've picked up over the years? It's beautiful to start that way, and our faith should bring us pride. But let's talk about what creating a sacred space does. Home altars have deep roots for Catholic Christians, and is considered a staple for Catholic families all over the world. Long ago, and in some places today, areas didn't have a church. And so families would have to wait for a priest, a mission priest, to come from far away to celebrate mass with them. This is true in, in many places in our world. And so between the masses, they created home altars in order to celebrate, pray, meditate, and reflect on their faith. Some were and are hugely elaborate. Others are pretty simple. But the idea behind it is it's a centralized place where you can foster a closeness to God, where you can spend time contemplating and thinking about Him. The altar is the place where we celebrate the Paschal Mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The home altar is where we evangelize this through the kerygma or the proclamation, and we say Christ loves us. Christ died for us, and Christ walks with us daily. Let's talk about the basics of a home altar. If nothing else, a Bible, crucifix, and a rosary. Every home has these, even if they need a little dusting off. Additions can come in the form of statues, holy water, mass cards, relics, candles, lighted wax melters, or even electric candles. We have a faith that loves our senses. Taste, sight, smell, sounds, touch, they're all involved in Mass, and they should be too in your home altar. If you haven't set one up already, your family should be involved together in creating this sacred space. And it's okay if somebody wants to put something a little not typical for your Catholic faith. Well, what if you just put something blue on Ray and, and something brown on Kylo, and they represented to your child Mary and Joseph? It's all okay. The home altar should be approachable. It should be touchable. I would not put out your uh, favorite Crystal Mary statue on a home altar. You want this to be something that your family feels comfortable with. Seasonally, you can put shells in the summer because creation is a part of who God is. So fall leaves, go pick leaves together. Bring them in and set them at the table. Did you find a really cool acorn? Let's do that. In the winter, I don't know, what would you put in the winter? Those are the great things that your family can come up with together. So let's talk about where these should be in the home. Ideally, it would be nice to have it in a central location so everybody can be reminded about it. But if you already have one and that's where it is and you're finding you don't use it the way it's intended, maybe put it in a, a more private place so people can pray quietly. For confirmation students, I highly recommend you set something small up in your room. Um, this doesn't have to be elaborate. This can be on the top of your dresser, a corner of your dresser, on your nightstand. Something where every time you see it, you remember, oh, I need to just say hi to Jesus. It doesn't have to be a big deal. But sometimes those moments when you really need to talk to him, it helps to have these things already prepared and set up. Everybody knows when it's spring, summer, fall, and winter. But do we celebrate within our home the liturgical seasons? The home altar is the perfect way to do this because as you see on our altar table, we currently have green, which is ordinary time. And there's nothing ordinary about ordinary time. But we'll be getting into Advent soon, and I have a purple altar cloth for that. As a matter of fact, the students are already used to this because in each of the classrooms, 
they have altars set up on the counter. This doesn't have to be something you buy as special. I actually once used a kitchen towel to change the um, liturgical color of something. So, um, you know, while you're starting out, use what you have. So this week, take some time to find some items around your house that you can use to create your home altar and then share them with us. I'd love to see photos. Either text them to me, Instagram, Facebook, email, however you want to get them to me. And then when we have our family Zoom, let's share what we have on our different tables and why. Some of you might have some really interesting stories about the saints you've chosen, or maybe about the really interesting um, items that you have. Like, what's that? I would love to share that with you. So anyway, have a great week, and we'll see you for Family Catechesis next time.